Hey, what's up? In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use smart contracts in a front end application. So, for the example, I'm going to be using an open source code base for a project that I'm creating. To put it simply, you can deposit tokens into a smart contract, and that's pretty much all it does at the moment. This is a project that is ongoing, but even into the future, you should be able to continue using the code here as a reference point for this tutorial. Before actually starting, you need to understand how to connect a user's wallet to your front end application. And you need to know how to enforce one blockchain network on the front end application. I'll talk a little bit more about that later. So there definitely is a lot of concepts here. So if you can't figure out how to implement this into your specific project, then I recommend you to clone the repo and try to get a minimum version that actually works. And as, of course, as usual, all the links you need are down below. There'll be a blog tutorial link, there'll be the GitHub repo and anything else that's needed. To start off, you need a contract store file. This will be where you initialize your contracts into the front end using global state and a few different methods. Global state is actually used so that you can access your contracts in any file throughout your project. With that in mind, the library I use for global state is called Zustend. So if you haven't already downloaded that, that, or if you haven't already installed that, this is probably a good time to do that now. Since the contract store is for initializing contracts, there's really only two main methods that's needed. One for initializing the contracts and one for clearing the contracts, if that's even needed. Uh, one example of when you may need to clear the contracts is if a user actually switches the network that they're on and then the contract addresses are going to be different. So of course you want to clear the data first. Creating the global state structure is fairly simple. You import create from Zustin and then pretty much just use the syntax. I don't really need to explain it. You can look up documentation for Zustin if you would like, but what you do need to know, this is where you will actually define your contracts. This is where you define their names. So I have one called all 41 exchange contract and it goes here. If you have any more, just put them right here. And of course, clearing the contracts themselves is fairly easy. You just simply set the state and set all of the contracts to undefined or null. Now, initializing the contracts is a little bit more difficult. So first of all, you can see here that there are two external dependencies that you need. One being this Web3 parameter that needs to be passed in, and the other being this network variable, which is a global variable that needs to be passed in. This is where my previous tutorials actually come in, and I have one where it shows how to connect a user's wallet to a front-end application, as well as set the Web3 object that is actually passed in right here. To put it simply, in all of my projects, I use the Web3 class in order to connect to the blockchain. And then after the Web3 object is initialized, it is passed into this method, and then you can use it in order to uh, initialize contracts on the front end. And of course, my previous tutorial will show you exactly how to set this Web3 object. Now, this global network state variable, it allows you to store any data related to a network and 
it enforces only one blockchain network on the front end at a time. This is really important here because the contract addresses will be different on testnet versus mainnet. So the tutorial where I explain how to set this network variable will of course be in the description below. Now that you have all those external variables handled, we can continue. So basically what we are doing right here, we are fetching all the contract addresses and we are fetching all of the ABIs. You actually get both the contract addresses and the contract ABIs whenever you deploy a smart contract. If you weren't the one to actually deploy these contracts, then you can ask the creators for them. And otherwise, if they went and verified these contracts on Etherscan, then you can go to Etherscan and find the address and the ABIs there. So once you have the ABIs and the contract addresses, you can use that along with the Web3 object in order to initialize all of your smart contracts. So for example, that's exactly what we're doing here. We pass in the ABI, we pass in the contract address, and we use the Web3 object here and here. And yeah, that's pretty much all it takes. If you have other smart contracts, you will need to do this same thing here. And then after that, all you do is simply set your global state. Now you want to figure out where to actually call this method right here. Well, clearly you want to initialize the contracts in the beginning. And this method is dependent on the Web3 object. So you should probably set the contracts after you set the Web3 object. Yep, that's exactly what we'll do. In my app, I initialize the contracts in two different locations. One, anytime the Web3 object is set, I then set the contracts. When this happens pretty much depends on you, when you want to do this in your application. In mine, I pretty much do it anytime a wallet connects or changes. The second place that I initialize the contracts is on the start of the app whenever there is no active wallet. When there's no active wallet, the wallet provider, such as MetaMask, is not providing a connection to the blockchain. So you need something like Infura in order to provide a connection to the blockchain. Otherwise, you won't be able to get blockchain data whenever a user is not connected. But that's slightly complex and I'm gonna actually cover that in another tutorial. But either way, the key to get out of what I'm saying right here is to always set it right after the Web3 object is set. And if you wanna see examples of this, you can go to this GitHub repo and do a search for this contract method and then you can come look at the code yourself. And once all that set up, you can actually use your contracts. I tend to place all my contract methods inside of their own file, inside of a folder structure that makes sense like this, actions slash web3 slash deposit.ts. So this is a method for depositing tokens into a wallet pool. Basically it's using a smart contract. And to do that, use the contract store just like this use contract store dot get state dot your defined contract that you defined inside of the wallet store then you do some error checking if it's null make sure it leaves an error message and then after that you can actually call the smart contract and that's exactly what's happening right here so you do the contract object dot methods and then the contract name and then after that you do dot send and as good practice you should probably always put a try catch around it and just to be extra clear 
this is the code that actually literally calls the contract method. So if the user is connected to MetaMask, then this will literally pop up a MetaMask pop-up and be like, yo, do you want to call this contract method? And that is pretty much it. There is a good bit of prior knowledge needed to understand all of this. So if you run into trouble or have any questions, feel free to join the Discord. We have a growing community of developers willing to help you out. Peace out and see you next time.